Hey everybody, welcome to Local Profiling episode 14, and um, this time it's uh, another engine in the voting poll that I did, you know, it's the one that should have been for number 13, it's, uh, this episode is about Southern Railway 850, Lord Nelson. Sorry that it took so long, in fact, right now I'm in the last stages of actually editing the episode, but um, yeah, you got a few notes pulled up here. Obviously, I need to give a little bit of credit to Chris Stephen Green again, because I'm allowed to use a little bit more music from Steam Locus and Profile. Yay! You're going to hear the music that he did for his, um, for, his, for his episode on the Southern Railway S15s, which I thought worked pretty well for Lord Nelson, too. So, credit to him. There are links in the description below to his YouTube channel and his web shop. And, you know, when it comes to the web shop, you can purchase the S15 episode there, either uh, separately as a, as a digital download, sorry, or as part of the Volume 5 Steam Locus and Profile DVD. Or you also get uh, episodes on the, on the S100, listed here as the Southern Railway USA tanks, uh, the London Northwestern B1s, the GWR Large Prairies, the GWR Small Panniers, the LMS Royal Scots, and the bonus episode on the PKP OL 49s. Shameless plug over. But also a little bit of credit goes to another guy called Jason Kerner because I used a little bit of uh, footage from one of his videos of Lord Nelson to properly show you guys a certain bit of engineering um, about that engine because I couldn't do it justice by just telling you it. You need to see it to properly understand it because that bit of engineering that I will explain towards the end of the video, that is like the big main trait of this engine. So, there's also a link to Kerner's YouTube channel, so check him out. Um, he did do, he does some uh, pretty good work. And um, in case you're watching this, sorry if I was a little bit impatient, I did ask for uh, permission. But at least I did give you uh, proper credit right now, and when I actually use the clip... Um, towards the end of the video. So yeah, without that, let's actually get on to the episode. This is actually quite a special locomotive because of a very particular distinction about it that we'll actually get onto later. But anyway, Locomotive 850, Lord Nelson, was built in 1926 at the Southern Railway's workshops at Eastleigh. Designed by the railway's chief mechanical engineer, Richard Monsell, this engine was the first of a whole new class, even if said class would only total 16 locomotives. With those 15 classmates, obviously numbered 851 through 865, emerging from the same workshop between 1928 and 29. They were built for the specific task of hauling 500 ton boat trains at an average speed of 55 miles per hour. Now, boat trains are special passenger trains meant to transport people to the docks so they can board an ocean liner. And yes, they were also used to pick up people at the docks who just got off an ocean liner and want to get the freak back home. And due to this very slight tie to a nautical or maritime theme, these Chucky Ten Wheelers were named after admirals of the UK's Royal Navy. And despite a few accidents, the class would remain intact until being withdrawn between 1961 and 62. They were fairly powerful too, usually boasting an attractive effort of 33,510 pounds. This was generated by a boiler pressure of 220 psi, a foursome of 16.5 by 26 inch cylinders, and 79 inch driving wheels but keep this variable in mind for later. In fact, remember the Great Western Castles, which were also four-cylinder ten-wheelers? The Lord Nelsons were made to be more powerful than those, trying to beat the GWR to represent the United Kingdom during the 1929's Fair of the Iron Horse, which celebrate the centenary of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad in the United States. And then the GWR's 6,000s, aka the Kings entered the chat. Anyway, at the time of withdrawal, 850 was earmarked for the National Collection, originally being stored at the former Pullman Works in Brighton, before being moved to the National Railway Museum at York for display. But then in 1980, the locomotive was returned to steam at Steamtown Conforth, making an appearance at the Rocket 150 cavalcade, 
However, in 1982, Lord Nelson was sidelined due to firebox issues. It received an overall in 2006, running on the main line, but then firebox issues creeped up again, curtailing the locomotive's main line career. At that point, it found a new home at the mid Hans Railway, where it remains today. Going back to the heyday of the whole class for a bit, there are some very interesting modifications done to the Lord Nelsons over the years, with the most successful probably being the reboring of the cylinders for a smoother piston cavity, and the Lemaitre blast pipes fitted by Oliver Bully, which brought the best out of them. But the big thing is that each locomotive got its own unique fittings and modifications, because despite some standardization, obviously, none of the Lord Nelson locomotives were exactly alike. They were all slightly different in their own way, which is quite interesting to say the least. And I got perhaps the four most notable examples written down here. Firstly, you had 857, Lord Howe, being fitted with a round top firebox instead of the squarer bell pair firebox. Then you had number 859, Lord Hood, which was the strongest locomotive in the class with a higher tractive effort of 35,298 pounds thanks to being fitted with smaller 75-inch driving wheels, as opposed to the standard 79-inch driving wheels fitted to the others. Because as a usual rule of thumb of steam locomotive science, bigger driving wheels may equal a greater top speed, but smaller driving wheels can give you better acceleration, low speed adhesion, and more pulling power. Then there was 860, Lord Hawk, which was fitted with a bigger boiler, as if the standard boiler didn't look big enough. And finally, there was the last engine in the class, Locomotive 865, Sir John Hawkins, which had its driving wheels quartered, meaning that they were offset from each other by the bog standard 90 degrees for balanced running, and thus four even chuffs per rotation of the driving wheels. That last point of contention brings me to the most interesting hallmark of number 850, and the other Lord Nelson locomotives as well something that was apparently done for even better balancing. Oh, by the way, when it comes to number 850, you can either address it as Lord Nelson himself or herself. Because, you know, engine men have given that particular engine the nickname Nelly. But whatever. When it comes to four-cylinder steam locomotives of this particular fashion, where you have two outside cylinders and two inside cylinders, the inside ones have their running gear and valve gear set to 180 degrees opposite to the outside cylinders. So you would indeed still have the four chuffs for every rotation of the driving wheels, if they were set to the standard 90 degrees, that is. But the big trick in question with most of the Lord Nelson locomotives was that they didn't follow that standard bit of logic. Instead of being quartered, thus offset by 90 degrees, the driving wheels on most of the other Lord Nelson locomotives were offset from each other by a more unusual 135 degrees. So you had the unique sound of eight chuffs per rotation of the driving wheels, essentially making the locomotive sound twice as fast than it's really going. And if you ask me, that's the big draw of this locomotive. Sure, the chunky proportions and the malachite green for her main color go a long way too. But the four-cylinder layout combined with the driving wheels being offset from each other by 135 degrees, resulting in that unique uh, sound of eight chuffs per rotation, that's the big draw. That's what makes number 850, Lord Nelson, unique. And I do sincerely hope that they will never change that easily making the locomotive one of the most distinctive ten-wheelers in the United Kingdom.